right guys, thought I would uh, have a quick conversation with you regarding Bearfield Blue Pool. So it's a really intimate four acre lake, um, it's quite weedy um, and you've got depths that go all the way down to 16 foot with an average depth, I would say across the lake of 10 foot. Um, it's pretty uniform, there's the odd gravel hump about, um, but yeah, most of it is 10 foot and the margins are really nice and deep. So for the stalking, you're talking like five foot in some places just off your rod tip. So really, really nice there. You can watch the fish and you can see eight foot down. It's really clear with the weed in here as well. It just keeps it lovely and clear. Stock wise, you've got around about 220 to 240 carp. Um, quite a lot of 30 pounders in here at the right time of year. Um, probably around the 30 mark. So it's a good head of 30s and then a lot of back up 20s um, to go out as well and a lot of high 20s and a really nice water. I'm fishing on the social bank this weekend um, or we're actually going to call it the unsocial bank because I'm the only one over it. Everyone's gone the far side so Billy no mates over here. I have a little cry to myself and put myself to sleep. If you're looking for a venue for a social, definitely. Advanced Angling Burfield Blue Pool is the one to certainly have a look at. At £250 per 24 hours, good value for money. And actually in the winter, from December to February time, goes down to 125 um, And it is, has got very good winter form down here. With the depths that we've got, there's no reason why you can't have a few. And I know a few pals that have come down here and had really, really good sessions in the winter. Also guys, We've got a very good Catran prize giveaway on this video. There will be a question at the end of the video. It will be about something that could be in any section. So make sure you're listening out, taking little bits in. And uh, yeah, I would be very jealous of what the stuff you're gonna get. I've been using the Catran this weekend and I'm amazed at the quality of it and also how durable it is. So stay tuned guys. After doing the draw, obviously come out second, we had a good walk round at the start, there was fish showing literally all over the lake, so it wasn't like I really want to go in this stream or really go in that stream. So we had a good lap round, see a lot of fish in different areas just mooching about. Obviously I picked, picked this swim as uh, I had good open water opportunities straight out, and also as well I've watched a lot of stuff in other videos and the fish seems to be getting heavily pressured in the edge, so I thought I'm going to fish a little bit different, I'm going to find a spot in open water. So what I did is I got my deeper on, had a cast around, and it's floors are selling weed everywhere. And I was just reeling it in, and this area came up like glowing. I was like, yeah, that's the spot. That was like solid weed everywhere. Took, reeled in, took the deeper off, then put a lead on, cast out, and it went down with Simon standing at the time, and it absolutely cracked down. I went, that, that's the spot I'm gonna be fishing. So I wrapped it up, Got the spod rod out and I, I went quite heavy with a bait. Put about 30 spoms out and I thought, well, I'm here for a, at least three nights. And I put quite a bit of bait out, crumbs and boilies up, loads of hemp, bits of corn and stuff. Put a good help in the bait out there. Put some rigs on, cast out. And I've got one marker on the poplar and one in the dip of a tree. So the rods are only about probably six foot apart. Fishing quite tight lines as well. So obviously, yeah, fishing nice and locked up and obviously go from there. My third rod, obviously I'm known as a known spot underneath that tree. So I've been trickling baiting under there. Been borrowed, actually borrowed Simon's baiting pole and I'm not, you know, I'll be honest, I'm not a pro with a baiting pole so it took me a few goes to get where I wanted it. Finally got it under, under there and obviously tips it off, nice donk. Obviously we're getting a few liners and stuff on it. So fingers crossed, I'll get one out the margin. As you can see, in action already. I had this one about 10 minutes ago. Absolute mental fight, proper rut. Wipey, put loads of bait out as well. 
So I found a lovely little spot amongst the weed, really nice hard spot. Lakes floor to ceiling weed, so I was really happy to find like, a nice spot. As you see, lo lovely fish in my hand. Taking a few shots of it now. Gonna treat his mouth with a little bit of uh, mouth damage. And then I slip it back. A few other loads down as well. Hopefully I get amongst them and uh, yeah, be back to you soon. Fish number two for me, banging common, proper rut. Test the old Catran products again, put the line through its paces, winning out with a couple of weed beds. Stay strong, obviously, proofs in the pudding, nice big common on the bank, will that be? Fish are clearly on my spot, been fizzing up all morning on it, so it's just a matter of time before it rattled off. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the other lads can catch up, and get some fish as well. So finally one in the in the net. Had a bit of a disaster today, lost three fish. So um, yeah, it was very welcome to get this one. Probably a scraper 20, upper double, something like that. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. Finally off the mark. So welcome to my humble abode. Um, I came out fourth in the draw out of a total of four. Uh, so I did really well as normal in these draws. Um, we did the, a lap of the lake. Um, my first choice was taken uh, by James Horn, uh, who is uh, in next, next to me. Um, but I opted for Swim 20. Um, it gives me quite a bit of water to aim at. Um, it is actually uh, the deeper water. However, I do have a, a tree-lined margin to go for. So I was quite happy with, uh, with my pick in the end um, would have loved to have been next door though. The swim is absolutely alive with carp. It is actually carp soup. They are rocking them weed beds. The wind's hacking into the swim. It's perfect. I did mention earlier that this is the deepest part of the lake. I'm fishing in about 10 foot of water. The deepest area in the swim is about 16 foot and the carp are about a foot under the surface. Unfortunately, the rules say that there's no zigs, no surface fishing, so I'm on the bottom. So it's been a frustrating day today seeing all these fish, but I'm hoping that later they might drop down and I might have another chance or two. First one for me from Burfield Blue Pool. Looks like an upper double, we'll weigh it shortly. Caught two foot from the bank this one, proper close quarters was uh, in the net rather sharp and still quite lively. Caught on DNA baits, PB wafter. Actually saw the uh, fish come up off the spot and saw the wafter in its mouth. Whoa. Really nice fish. Made up with this one. Unfortunately lost a couple before this one, so really disappointing, but makes it even more worthwhile having this one. Hopefully we can have a few more, still got a while left. Well, I'm off the mark, it's the second night, and this is my first fish. Absolutely lovely common, coming after dark. I found a spot earlier today, saw some fizzing, marked it up, put a couple of spawns on it tonight, and a couple of hours later, this is my reward. Still plenty of time to go tonight. Hopefully, I'll be back soon with another one. So an early morning wake up call with this lovely 25 pound mirror. Um, I lost one in the night about midnight as well. Um, weeded me up. And uh, so to get this this morning was absolutely great. 
we're all off the mark now on the carp vault social so great that everyone's caught there's still plenty of time for more fish to come out and hopefully we'll be able to show you them by the end of the video i'm going to get her back and we'll see if we can get you another one Second fish of the trip, nice upper 20 mirror. Absolute cracker, lovely dark fish. Let's get it back, see if we can get some more before it gets dark. came out first in the draw, so I had absolute pick of the lake. So I really did not know where to go when I got here. There's fish all over the lake. This end of the lake, the way we've set it up, because we cut it up into six sections of the lake, this part of the lake meant I had the whole of this back bay in effect, all this snag line. Um, so I decided to go into what a lot of people call Cor de Corner, um, famous from all the underwater filming. So it was, probably a group of sort of 30 or 40 fish down here on the first day, sitting up in the sunshine, some bathing. So my plan of attack was the tree line along the snags. There's not really, or oh, I've not found a lot of clear areas out in the open water. There's a couple of little small spots within the weed, which you're always going to find, but nothing too obvious. And um, to be honest, the bulk of my bites have come along, along the snag line. So yeah, that's why I picked this end, just because I had all this water to myself, no one to interfere with it. And I was hoping, because the weather was originally forecast to be sunnier, that it'd be sitting down here every day, enjoying the sun. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it's been a bit cloudier and drizzly rain, and the fish have been feeding a little bit heavier, more heavy during the day than expected, but they've unfortunately moved out into the main section of the lake in front of the other boys. So, um, yeah, I'm up against it, but I'm still just in front at the moment. Four fish of the trip puts me one ahead of the boys so let's have a look it's a nice upper double one of the younger fish definitely not as dark as the other ones I've had but a cracker and definitely one for the future this one lovely scaling caught on Atlantic heat wafter get a little bit lively there with my 45 pound termit hook link doing the business keeping strong against them snags let's get it back See how we, how we can get a few more. Come. Right, so as you would have seen, I've just had a lovely little mirror, probably an upper double. So I'm um, just gonna have to quickly change the rig. Hook point's been burred over. So put that away to one side in another tub. Got a couple of rigs already pre-tied pre up this morning, ready for the action. I've got size 4 curve shank, barbless because it's barbless rule on this one and a 45 pound termit hook link fishing up against snags and there's lots of muscle beds um, or muscles on the branches I should say it's causing me a few problems so just quickly tie this fresh hook link on 
really like using this termit hook linger, started using it this year. It's um, an uncoated braid, it's got an element of suppleness to it, but it's also still got a little bit of wiriness to it, so it still kicks out away from the lead if, as long as you're hitting the clip or um, dropping it from a spoon and feeling it down like I am. So just put one of my little hook baits on. These are my Atlantic heat ones, covered in all sorts of goodness, GLM, sea stim, all sorts of stuff on there, liver powders. Got them all ready on little wing swivels. Grab a hook bead. That's that all sorted. Just check the leaders are all right. Yeah, no damage to that. The leader material I'm using is the is the Phantom Fluoro. Really strong this stuff. I was using it in the 0.45 mil stuff, but I've gone up to the 0.5 because of their muscles and the branches. Unfortunately, I've lost a couple of fish to cut offs. So that's helping me get more of my fish back since I've been going up to that stronger stuff. So that's all ready to go. Let's go and get it out and um, see if we can catch some more. Now keep yourself tuned guys because we've got a huge competition. Uh, Catran and Rig Locker, they've supplied a mega, mega prize for this. So to find out exactly what you need to do to win it, stay tuned. We're going to show you the prize and we're going to show you exactly how you can get your hands on it and be in a chance to win it. All the best guys, we'll catch up with you soon. Right guys, just going to get a rig tied up. Uh, I'm actually using the Withy Pool uh, rig this time. Uh, there's a little bit of weed out there, so I just want to pop it up. And I started off the session um, fishing my favoured Slip D rig, but the hook baits were coming back a little bit smelly. So I just want to pop it up, make sure everything's presented right. So let's get this tied. So what I've got here is about 14 inches of Catran Cobra in 25 pounds. And then I've got an ESP claw hammer. That's the withy pull rig all tied, ready to go out of there. All we need to do is just get a bait on there and go around to the spot. Hopefully we can get one for the cameras. Morning, join me up here at Blue Pole in session at the moment. Rod's just rattled off this morning. I was in deep battle with this mirror, absolutely weeding me up um, beyond belief. Lucky enough, Richard Isles come down, he uh, chucked to like a grappling lead over because I was literally locked solid for a good half hour. I, ne I never actually thought I was actually going to get this in. So I put the rod back on the rest for a little bit, let it go slack, and it started taking a little bit of line, but I was actually hitting the same point all the time. So Rich come over, down the lead, we led about, managed to pull a great load of weed in, and then all of a sudden it just come free, and this is what I've got, an absolute banging mirror. Black as you're at, completely blown away really, because I ne never thought I'd actually get this on the bank. So a big thanks to Rich, and obviously Simon Elks as well, they're up as well as well, as well this weekend. So if you look at this, ah, check that out. Absolute banger. Well happy with that. On the new mainline test bait, the fish which I'm using, done about four kilo put out, so they're definitely definitely on the bait. Found a lovely little uh, clear area amongst sort of a uh, 12 foot of weed. So I've been steadily tricking bait bait in there. And yeah, this is a this is a prize. More than happy with that. Absolutely stunning fish. Caught on the uh, 
using a Phantom in 0.50, which is a product from Catran, which I'm really happy with at the moment. 21 pound Krypton line, mega line. I, I can't, actually can't believe how strong that line is. It is, you know, you will tire busting with it really. It's a ridiculous line. So yeah, really happy with this. Hey, so this is the other side. Absolute stunning fish. Do a couple of shots for it now. A little bit of damage on the side, it's going to treat a bit of propolis. Get it back out there. I'm going to rewrap my rod, put a bit more bait out there, back out to the area, and hopefully have some more to show for the camera. I'll talk you through the tactics I'm using on this session. ANC is one of my favourites, it's a solid bag rig. And I'm using the Flora in 20 pound as a hook link. I'm double bagging these due to the depth and the water temperature. And I'm actually just casting this one just down the margin under like an overhanging snag. And I'll talk you through another tactic I'm using on my longer spots, which is with this product, which is called a Phantom. This is the uh, 0.50 version which is a thicker version which I like to use because obviously it's quite dense weed out there and I'm using you know don't need to boil with this it's just like a simple spinner rig running rig spinner rig which is, which I'm actually crimping and yeah this crimps really nice so that's that's the one I've just had that fish on that you've just seen using a little small little pop-up on this casting out obviously filling for a drop there's only like a tiny little area out there at the moment it's really dense weed so I'm literally casting that in the clip, filling it down, getting a lovely crack, fishing quite tight lines as well, because I don't want the fish picking my bait up and then diving into a weed bed. I've got just barely nicking the leads on, and as I'm getting a couple of bloops, going down to rod. Playing them quite heavy as well, because obviously it's barbless hooks on here. So I uh, obviously want to try and get, get them up on the surface if I can, and then just you know keep the pressure on, hopefully I avoid the weed, get them in, and obviously fish on the bank. Right guys, here's another one for me. Uh, this one's probably an upper double. Caught a stalk in once again, literally two foot from the bank. On the uh, DNA PB wafters, I'm actually putting them in half um, to make sure they're that little bit smaller because I'm just putting some particle down there and they're proper grubbing down. Uh, this one was one of five fish actually grubbing around in there and I was just sitting on my hands and proper electric stuff watching them feed. Dropping the lead, so they come straight up out the water. There's a little bit of weed around the spot, so just want to make sure I've got a four ounce inline on there, so proper hitting home. Nice little scaly stocky, absolute cracker. Definitely one for the future, this one. 
It'll look mega in a few years' time. It looks mega now, to be fair. It's um, proper lively, this one. So I'm going to get it back as soon as I can. Yeah, once again, fishing up tight against the snags, Atlantic heat, hook baits, and the Krypton holding firm. So yeah, happy days. Let's get this one back. Number six of the trip, and my first common as well. So, yeah, not a monster, up a double. Probably was a scrape of 20 before it spawned. I'm gonna pop this one back, see if I can get a few more. So, before I talk about what bait I've been using uh, for this session, um, just draw your attention, long sleeve top. Um, it's been absolutely boiling this weekend. Um, really, really hot. Long sleeve top by Tracker, UV protection built in, protect from yourself from the sun. Um, you're out in it all day, so really important to look after yourselves. Onto my baiting approach. I've kept my bait the same as I always use. Use something you've got confidence in. For me, Atlantic Heat, Edge Pellet uh, from Baitworks. More than happy with, with that bait, no need to change. So in prep for uh, this trip, what I actually did was pre-soaked my boiling. I did that beginning of the week. So it was soaking for a good few days. I really wanted that washed out look. What I didn't want to do is, is come and put in a load of fresh boilie straight out of the bag. I wanted it to look like it had been there a while. Hopefully, that would have given me an edge. So I've got my pre-soaked boilie, I've got some hemp, and I've got my edge pellet. All of that is now a stodgy mix. So it's really thick, really gloopy. What I've also done, I've added some of the sea stim, And of course, as you can see, I've gone through quite a bit of, of edge liquid as well. Um, I think, especially in the summer, as I mentioned earlier, these fish are on the surface today. I believe with them liquids, the smell, the attraction goes throughout the water column, drawing the fish down. So that's what I'm trying to do. Load up your bait, your hemp, your pellet, your boilie, spawn it out, releases all of the liquids up into that water column and hopefully results in a fish or two. Right guys, so this is the stalking rig that I've been using this weekend. It's around about six inches long. Um, what I've got there is half the PB DNA baits wafter. Then I've got a quarter claw size four in barbless. I'm not putting any um, kickers or tubing over that it turns quick enough um, and then I've got a medium sinker halfway down the hook linker choice that I've gone for is the Catran Enduro in 25 pound it's been really really strong stuff um, fishing on close quarters in those snaggy areas not having an issue at all um, I've had not even had to change a hook link the only reason I've had to change the hook link is if the hook's gone blunt which this one did we had that fish last evening but um, yeah, it's been one that's really working. I really like the Enduro. It's a little bit stiffer than normal uncoated braids, but I like that just because when you're fishing such a like, short little rig, it can just reset itself. And same with solid bags, I'd be happy using this in there. It coils up nicely and would just reset if we all know that we're gonna get ejected. I would love to say that I'm hooking one in one, but. I, I can safely say I'm not hooking one in one because I've watched them. <laughs> and uh, frustrating stuff, but still entertaining stuff at the same time. 
So yeah, just want that rig to reset every time. I don't want any anti-tangle sleeves on there to clunk it up. I just want it to be nice and supple still so everything can just shoot up straight into their mouth and nail them. And this rig was about an inch back in that fish last night. So yeah, very happy and uh, one that has worked well this weekend. Check out the catch round enduro. Right guys, thought I would go through my swim choice for the weekend down at Burfield Blue Pool. Um, I came out third in the draw. Um, I couldn't actually get down here for the draw due to work commitments, um, but thank you very much to the guys while they were walking around. They did um, video call me, telling me what they were seeing, um, and they told me that the fish were pretty spread out. Um, I fished this peg before, so I know it's a peg that normally holds a few fish and does some few fish over the weekend. Unfortunately, it's been a little bit difficult to get some bites for me over this side. I don't know why um, the fish just haven't seemed to move down here as much. They've stayed in kind of the central body and over in the far corner where Rich is. Um, but yeah, so what we've got is the left hand rod is just fished, fishing over to the snaggy bush that you can see in the far side. Um, that's actually just a fallen tree. Um, when I was here around three years ago, uh, that wasn't there. Um, you could actually fish a little bit further, but I know just past that is a big gravel shelf that drops down, and uh, in front of that bush you've got 10 foot of clean gravel for about two rod lengths, and then it comes into the um, weed. Then on the middle rod, fishing out to the corner of the island, about three red lengths, rod lengths off um, to the right hand side of it, uh, and that one's fished at 16 wraps. Um, there's a little hard spot out there with some silt around the side. Um, and probably looking again about 10 foot. So certainly a good depth of water down this end. Um, and I know it fishes quite well in the winter up here as well. Um, so what I've also got is a little swim next door and I've put a rod out of there. That's just uh, bushwhackered out. It's only eight wraps out, so nice short work. It's a really shallow um, gravel bar out there. It actually comes up to seven foot and you 10 foots all around it so quite an increase and with the warmer weather that we've had uh, in between the showery spells this weekend uh, it's a spot that I thought might do do me a bite. I only moved a rod on there uh, yesterday morning um, I left it for a little while and just thought nah, we'll give it a try and had quite a lot of liners on that rod last night and uh, thought we we're going to be way but unfortunately that didn't happen. Just, just reeled in, come round back to my swim, gonna uh, clip my uh, net back up to my area. Just over 14 wraps out I'm fishing at the moment. Obviously there's no one opposite me, me, so I can push my boundaries a little bit. So two, three, four, five, six, Seven, 12, 13, 14, about a foot I am. One thing I would say as well is uh, when you're wrapped up, obviously you're back on your rod, sometimes you get a couple of loose coils on. So what I do is just do a gentle, gentle little lob, don't whack it straight back out to your area. Because that's when you tend to get sort of bird's nest, so you get a bit of frapping. Also the line's dry as well. So I'm literally just going to go to the swim. You can even just, you, I'm not fishing far out, so I can literally just underarm it out. Wet the line. That's it. Rig's all ready to go. I'm going to clip that on now. Obviously using the old 
quick change clips, which I use all the time. All right, rigs clips back on, ready to go. Hopefully uh, that will produce me a bite tonight. And hopefully I'll have one for the camera. Right, wind's actually my favour, so it's literally off my back. I mean, it's only a sort of short cast anyway, which always helps if it's in your favour. I'm just gonna come back, line myself up for that poplar tree. Little cast out there. Bang on. Oh, went down for far, I don't know where that went out. So this is the Catran Krypton Mono. This is the 21 pound version. Seriously strong stuff. I was given a spool of this to try out in the springtime, well, early spring, early part of the year. And I took it on my local lake and I thought I'd give it a proper good testing out. First of all, I tried to see how strong it was in terms of sort of casting ability. And I was actually going over 45 wraps with this with a four ounce lead, no lead or anything. So really impressed with it. Um, I then, had a look at the abrasion resistance side of things. Moved on to a new pit this year on a new syndicate and I'm fishing predominantly at long range, so perfect for the job. There's a lot of muscle beds and really savage bars in that lake, so wanted to see how that held up against it. And I've done really well this year, caught a good few fish and they've given me some proper rucks out at range, going around the back of uh, sort of gravel humps and bars and all sorts, and it's a very weedy lake. and it stood the test. Um, I, I can't really fault it. The, the mono itself, even when I've been around the back of bars and stuff, it's not even had any abrasion marks on it. So seriously strong stuff and it's low stretch as well. And predominantly before moving to my new syndicate, I was a braid user from my main line for probably the last five, six years. So I wanted something that was low stretch so I could still feel them, that detail when it's dropping down on particular spots within spots and I can still do that with this, so I'm really happy with it. Um, what I would say with it as well is the colouring of it. When you first look at it, a lot of people think it's a sort of funny sort of greeny colour. Depending on the light, it actually changes colour the way the light reflects off it. Sometimes it's a browny red, sometimes it's a green. Um, I'm not put off by it at all. It disappears in amongst the weed and it sinks like a brick. Um, once it's in the water it seems to just sort of take on the colours of its surroundings so it's got that sort of chameleon effect so yeah absolutely perfect and I'm using it today on this lake over at Bergfield Blue Pool so it's it's not I've not had any cutoffs on the main line so yeah brilliant so one of the other benefits with this line is you can actually get a blue LED headlamp which you could try and sell and at night time, when you shine that light onto this, this line, it lights up. It goes like a bright, luminous yellow in effect. It doesn't travel through the water either, so I've tested it, put it in the edge, gone down the bank, and I've had my torch on it on forward, and sort of 10 meters down the bank, you can't see it traveling through the line. So that was something I was worried about initially, but it's not anything I'm, I've got any concern about now. One of the real benefits of using that light at night as well is, is when you're fishing two or three rods on a spot uh, at range or anywhere on any lake, you can, once you've cast that rod out, you can put your headlight on, look at the line, and you can follow that line going out into the lake at the feature in the distance so you know that you're back on the money. And if you've got two or three rods on the spot, you've not crossed lines, they're all in the right place. Um, and also when you're playing fish as well, I've had some fish over on my syndicate where I'm fishing two or three rods on a spot I'm playing the fish in it's kiting left and right over the top of my lines with the headlamp on and looking at that line in the distance up in the skyline you can actually follow your line traveling over your other lines and if need be you can lift up one of your rods and let it tuck underneath it um, but it's a, another one of its features and benefits <laughs>
Right guys, no fish number three for me, caught from the stalking spot again. Literally two foot from the bank, just as the uh, light was going. But you could see the dark shapes just moving around and it was uh, pretty cool stuff again, sitting on the hands and just waiting for that line to pull up tight. Again on the PB wafter, soaked in the pineana. Morning guys, just sitting in this morning having a cup of coffee, looking out onto my area, see a bit of fizzing, had a couple of bleats in the middle rod, and then bang, she was away. Jumped out the bivvy, fishing really tight lines, picked the rod up, loads of pressure like that, tries to keep it up high on the surface, dogged its way in, in and out of a few weed beds and stuff, and obviously, yeah, might finally got a net under it, and yeah, got a cracking old, sort of prehistoric looking mirror. Really happy with this one. Caught on a, Spinner rig, white pop up over about four or five kilo of bait. I really put some bait in last night because these fish are clearly on the munch at the moment. So, yeah, gone through loads of bait. Really happy with this one. I can lift it up now for the camera. There she is, guys. Absolute prehistoric looking mirror. Bit of a funny shape one, but yeah, really happy with that. Gonna uh, treat its mouth in a minute, have a look at its size, put a bit of treatment on that. Get this one back, get me rod back out to the area, and hopefully, uh, all my bites seem to come in in the mornings. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, I'll have another one to show for the camera. This is the other side. This is actually the fourth one for me on this session. Had an absolutely mega weekend up here at Blue Pool. Right live for the rest of the team from Carp Vault. And don't forget to get involved with the Catran competition. This is gonna be a really good prize for one lucky winner. So also don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Any more information you want from us boys, please contact us on the uh, social media platforms. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Right guys, it's competition time now. As we said earlier on in the video, Catran and Rig Locker are supplying an absolutely huge competition prize. Now, all you've got to do to get your hands on this amazing bundle is answer the following question and then go over to the Rig Locker Facebook page or Instagram page, like it and write the answer to this question. What hook link did James Rintoul use for his stalking rig. So that's what hook link did James Rintoul use for his stalking rig. So go over to the Rig Locker page now and stick your answer in and good luck. Well everyone, that brings us to a close on our feature down here at the Burfield Blue Pool in Reading. The lads have had some mega fish, they've had a great time fishing on the complex and we've got to be out of here in about half hour. So don't forget to enter yourself into the prize giveaway. Don't forget also to like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've got more content coming all the time and I hope to see you all on the next one. All the best, tight lines. <laughs>